Throughout the game, when your focus slips away for even just a few moments, you make ridiculous mistakes. Suddenly your mechanical skills get sloppy, your reaction time slows down, and a sudden lack of brain power ruins your ability to make intelligent decisions. And it's this lack of brain power that causes those bad plays and makes you frustrated with yourself. You know that you could have easily succeeded, killed the enemy, or clutched the round, but a lapse in mental energy was enough to make you throw the play, and maybe even the entire game. Now, most gamers are well aware of this issue. They understand that focus and mental clarity are critical if they want to maintain consistent peak performance. But focus itself is a complex topic, one that I've researched a lot lately. And while the answer to optimal focus is multi-layered, it often comes back to your brain's electrical activity. If you were to put a bunch of electrodes on your head while you played your favorite game, I'd be able to easily measure precisely when you lost focus. And being able to measure your brain's activity in this way doesn't only help us to understand what focus is on a fundamental level, but also teaches us how we might be able to change our brains so that we can get more of it. In fact, by understanding and influencing the electrical activity in your brain, you might be able to enhance your focus, confidence, and even reaction time on demand and consider how powerful that is for you. You'd be far more dominant during clutch situations and far more capable of sustaining your attention throughout long gaming sessions. So let's look at the science behind your brain and see how you can start enhancing it right away. On a basic level, our brains are vast, complex networks of billions of neurons. And these neurons use electrical impulses to communicate to each other. In fact, at any given moment, millions of neurons are firing electrical signals creating a beautiful ocean of electricity across your brain. And as this happens, clusters of neurons in your mind begin to sense the activity of the other clusters around them, and start to synchronize their firing to enhance communication. And as this happens, these synchronized pulses begin to fire in repeating rhythms called neural oscillations, or as we commonly refer to them, brainwaves. But not all brainwaves are the same. In 1924, a German psychiatrist named Hans Berger invented a device called the electroencephalogram, or EEG device. And he did this to help measure and understand the activity that happens inside our brains. Now, using this device, we discovered that there are different types of brainwaves, separated by their firing speed. And what's most interesting about measuring these brainwaves is that it allowed us to discover how brainwaves change depending on what we're doing. But within the entire range, there are five core types of brainwaves, each associated with different mental states. And generally, the higher frequency the wave, the more alert and awake you are. The slowest of the brainwaves is the delta wave, which is commonly seen during deep sleep. Now, slightly faster are the theta waves, which are often associated with lighter sleep or being in a state of drowsy daydreaming. Next up is the alpha wave. Now, these are common when you're awake but relaxed. Usually those who meditate are trying to get into this mental state. Beta waves are even higher frequency and lower amplitude, and they seem to occur when you're actively engaged in mental activities, concentrated on learning something, and generally alert and focused. Now the smallest, fastest oscillations are gamma waves. They tend to arise when you're hyper-focused on something, and are considered critical in information processing, as well as being very important for the flow state. So, in short, different brainwaves are associated with different mental states, and when it comes to not being able to focus or perform during ranked games, it likely comes down to an issue with undesired brainwaves. Now, a great example is those who have ADHD. From research, it seems that people with ADHD spend more time in the theta state than usual. And while these brainwaves may help with relaxation, daydreaming, and maybe even creativity, for those who have ADHD, it really just means that they struggle to produce faster beta brainwaves, which are necessary for focus. And it's likely that individuals who don't have ADHD have a similar issue on days where they just can't focus or can't shake off their brain fog. But 
On the flip side, an overabundance of beta brainwaves could possibly cause stress or even anxiety. And if you're unable to snap out of it, then it could mean being more prone to tilt and burnout. In other words, if we have too low of levels of individual brainwaves, it can prevent us from being the best player we can be. And by enhancing specific brainwaves during certain activities, it can massively improve our results. But how exactly do we change our brainwaves to get more focus and enhanced performance? In 1665, the Dutch physicist and inventor of the pendulum clock, Chris Huygens, discovered something extraordinary about his clocks. Whenever he placed two pendulum clocks close to each other, they would eventually synchronize their swings. He would set them up with entirely different swinging patterns, leave them to swing for a day or so, and somehow, as if communicating to each other, they would figure out how to start moving in sync. Now this strange phenomenon baffled a lot of people for a lot of years, and rightly so. How is it that two completely separate objects can synchronize in this way? Well, the answer to this question might lead to a method for controlling our brains. You see, the pendulum clocks as they move back and forth create sound pulses that travel from clock to clock. The more out of sync they are, the more negative feedback energy they produce. As a result, one slows down while the other speeds up. Eventually, as they become more in sync, this energy feedback is reduced further and further until they're finally in sync. But what does this have to do with brainwaves in improving your gaming performance? Well, when it comes to the brain, we might be able to have a similar level of influence. When the brain receives external stimuli at a similar frequency of natural brainwaves, it influences the oscillations in our mind, actively synchronizing them to the external frequency. And if we can control our brainwaves like this, we may be able to alter our level of energy, focus, and overall brain performance on demand. So the question then is, how do we do this to our brains? How do we give them the optimal frequencies so that we can change our state of mind? Well, one method for presenting this frequency is through sound. Music is fundamentally an acoustic wave in which the brain converts from sound vibrations to electrical signals. So it makes sense that we can use music at the right frequency to influence our brain waves, right? Well, a popular type of music aims to do exactly this, and it does so in a pretty interesting way. What I'm referring to is binaural beats. If you search YouTube for focus music or brain music of any kind, you'll probably see a long list of binaural beat videos claiming to improve your studying, sleep, and meditation. But what exactly is so special about these binaural beats, and how do they work? Well, in essence, binaural beats are an auditory illusion caused by introducing two different frequencies to each ear. In theory, if you feed a 200Hz frequency into your left ear and a 212Hz frequency into your right ear, your brain will perceive an auditory illusion of a beat oscillating back and forth between your head. Now, The frequency of that perceived oscillation would be based on each sound's net difference. In this case, it would be a net difference of 12Hz, which just so happens to mimic alpha brain waves and thus, it might put you into a state of calm and focus. So in theory, by introducing tones into each ear with specific frequency variations, we can create auditory illusions that may mimic and influence our brain waves. But this is just a theory, and the real question is if they actually work. Well, fortunately for us, some research shows that they do influence specific brain waves. In fact, a 2019 review of 22 studies found a significant link between more prolonged exposure to binaural beats and reduced anxiety. And another study showed that exposure to beta frequency binaural beats leads to an improvement in long-term memory. Now, consider the benefits of this in your own gameplay. By just plugging in headphones and turning on some binaural beats, you may be able to instantly reduce tilt and anxiety that builds up from frustrating ranked games. Or you might be able to enhance your ability to learn new game knowledge so that you can become a more intelligent player. But there's a caveat that I think is worth mentioning. While binaural beats may follow an interesting theory and create a hypnotizing auditory illusion, 
it might actually be no more effective than regular music. You see, almost all auditory sounds can affect a person's brain waves if in some way it resembles the brain's natural rhythm, and the brain doesn't require a fancy auditory illusion in order to do this. In fact, one study comparing binaural beats with regular beats found that they were both equally effective at changing brain waves. So binaural beats are in fact effective, but they aren't necessarily more effective than any other type of music. In fact, I'd argue that for some people, binaural beats might actually be less effective. You see, when it comes to influencing our brains, one study suggests that a critical factor beyond the type of music is how much we prefer that music. If you're to listen to raw binaural beats and don't enjoy how it sounds, then chances are the effect won't be very significant. So what then would be a better alternative to binaural beats? Well, some research suggests that one genre of music in particular might be promising for greater focus, reaction time, and overall performance. And this type of music is called Baroque music. Now, Baroque is a genre of classical music composed between 1600 and 1750. Think of composers like Bach. Now, research shows that instrumental Baroque music that is between 50 to 80 beats per minute can enhance alpha brainwaves, leading to deeper concentration and enhanced learning. In fact, in a study comparing Baroque music to no music, they verified that it did in fact increase alpha brainwaves, leading to a 19.9% improvement in a complex memory task, and led to a 18.9% improvement in reaction time. Now, another interesting observation in this study was that the task difficulty and memory load actually increased the effectiveness of the music, and having more impact during more difficult mental tasks is pretty big for esports. You see, during a typical game, we need to keep track of many changing variables at a given time, so if a particular type of music can help us to do this significantly better, we will instantly perform at a higher level. But why exactly does this music work so well? Well, it seems so useful due to the light mood, complex melodies, and low to medium tempos. You see, with faster tempos or more emotional tones, we may increase beta waves, which could lead to more energy, but less concentration. And with vocals or more simple melodies, the music might actually get stuck in our heads, taking up mental space that we need for our focus. Now, while there isn't as much research on other types of music, the benefits will likely apply outside of the Baroque genre, which is excellent news if you're not into classical music. You see, the criteria for this effect is just that it needs to have low to medium tempos, no lyrics, and a light emotional tone. And other great alternatives for this might include things like lo-fi hip-hop or similar types of instrumental study music. Over the past few years, these types of genres have become increasingly popular among students, and unsurprisingly, they meet the criteria of Baroque music, often including low to medium tempos between 70 to 90 beats per minute. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, some research suggests that music preference also plays a significant role. So for the greatest effects, I'd really just recommend doing your own experimentation with different instrumental music to see which is most effective for you personally. But here's the thing, brain entrainments and affecting your brainwaves with audio is actually pretty limited. You see, due to how your brain processes sound, its effect on our brainwaves is not as big as we'd like it to be. And quite honestly, brainwaves are pretty complex. It's not as though your brain has the same frequency patterns throughout the entire thing. Different areas of your brain are more commonly associated with specific brainwaves, and the dominance of individual brainwaves within each area of the brain will likely lead to different effects. During an activity like engaging in a 1v1, you'll have far different brainwave activity in each area of your brain than if you were studying game knowledge from a guide, and audio entrainment can't target specific areas of the brain. But fortunately, other technology might help us to do this, and perhaps even work more synergistically with audio entrainment to enhance our learning, focus, and reaction time. But this is a topic for the next video, and if you want to see that, then be sure to click the notification bell so that you don't miss it. But for now, focus on finding the optimal music that helps you reach a higher state of calm, 
focus, and attention. The results may be a significant boost in your performance, helping you to focus deeper, dominate clutch situations, make better decisions, and upgrade your skills faster. Now, if you want to rank up and improve your gaming skills as fast as possible, then I highly recommend checking out our new esports course. It's essentially a bootcamp style step-by-step -step course that teaches you how to train like a pro so that you can blast through skill plateaus and start making real progress. It includes over 50 short videos that go far beyond the tips mentioned in any of our YouTube videos and combine scientific research on how to enhance your motor skills and learning as well as professional level esports advice. It then combines all of the lessons into a 66 day challenge that you can use to make massive progress towards your esports goals. So if you want to improve your mechanical skills and game knowledge over the next 66 days, then join now using the link in the description. And of course, this video is also brought to you by our very own supplements called E-Advantage. In short, E-Advantage is a cheaper, healthier, and much more effective alternative to energy drinks. If you want to get insane focus without the jitters and sugar crash, and you want to play at the peak of your ability during important games, then I highly recommend it. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can find a link for it in the description below. And of course, I hope you guys loved this video. If you did, then leave a comment below and let me know what your biggest takeaway is. And as I usually do, I will be responding to every single comment posted within the first few days. So let me know what you think. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.